Tesla is down 23% from the start of this year till now. The only of the Magnificent Seven that is down this year. All the other ones are up and soaring. They're talking about getting rid of Tesla from the Magnificent Seven. Let's go value the company and see if it's a buy right now. So guys, Tesla, $192 a share, $670 billion market cap. Here's something I love about Tesla. 684 is enterprise value. That difference of 14 billion is debt. That's it. Compared to other car companies, they have such a low amount of debt compared to other car companies. And that's what I love about them. Look at their free cash flow. 4.4 billion and 3.8 billion over the last five years compared to that debt level, they can easily afford that. But speaking of that, that's what I don't love. Last year's net income, 15 billion versus their free cash flow of 4.36. Five-year net income of 6.6 versus five-year free cash flow of 3.8. For those of you who are new, I don't like it when the net income is that much higher than the free cash flow. They should be around each other. However, with that said, when it comes to Tesla, they're still investing for growth. They're still building factories. They're doing all this stuff. They're going to build factories in Mexico. So this free cash flow will be a lot lower. So immediately when I hear that, I go, ah, but then I think, wait a second, Tesla is still growing. Now, gross profit margin of 18.2%. That is great. That's higher than most companies. The unfortunate part is that number is declining. And let me show you. Guys, here's Tesla's gross margin over the last few quarters. Going back to 2021, I mean, it was increasing over 28% at one point, 30%. And now you see this decline. As the credits come down, is this a long-term trend? The other thing, guys, is their average price is declining because they keep cutting prices They talked about a price cut for the Model Y in the US after already doing it in Europe. So it's kind of scary. You have a company like Tesla coming out in last quarter's call and saying, hey, we're kind of actually worried about selling as many cars this year as we did last year because we're really trying to focus on some efficiencies, et cetera. Is that real? Are they just saying that? I don't know. But Tesla does have its issues in that regard. Now, back to this gross margin. A lot of people out there, think that Tesla is a software business. I get it. Whenever there's a company that might have a richer valuation, when I say rich, this price to sales ratio is seven. The average car company is between 0.4 and one. So this is 20 times almost on the low side, higher than the average car company. How do you justify that? Well, it's a software business. Okay. So I decided to pull up their recent 10K. Guys, these are their revenues of the last three years and broken down by segment. And it's very clear here. Automotive segment, energy, generation, and storage segment. Two different segments. By year, guys. Automotive made up 94.8% in 2021, 95% in 2022, 93%. Now, before I thought it was in the mid to high 80s. And I don't know where I... I thought it was in the annual report, but this is a clear breakdown of their segment revenue as a percentage of their total revenue. Guys, when 93% of your revenues come from automotive, you are a car business. Now, does that mean it can't get better? Sure, it can get better. But here's something interesting. Look at their energy business. And people say it's a software company. Well, great. If they're a software business, how are they going to make money using that software besides giving it to their users? That doesn't make sense. If they're only giving it to their their cars and you have to buy their car, that doesn't make them a software business. If they figure out a way to take that software and sell it to the masses with major gross profit, I will agree with you. And remember, sell it to the masses with major gross profit. If they're selling it for dinky amounts of money, which I don't think they would, then I get, I don't think you can argue it's a software business. But look at these gross margins. Cars are about 18%, like we said. Look at their energy. About the same thing, about 18%. So I look at this saying, wow, they're not really making a killing here. Now, with that said, look at their gross margin in the energy section over the years. It is definitely getting better and better. So they're probably getting economies of scale and really driving up that gross margin. I love that. But guys, this is still a car business, in my opinion. When 93 plus percent of your revenue comes from the car business, you are a car automatic manufacturer. When your gross margin is 18%, you're closer to a car manufacturer than a software business, which usually has 50% or more. Now, guys, there's a great quote 
In the short run, stocks are a voting machine. In the long run, they're a weighing machine. In my videos from two or three years ago, this was one of the most controversial companies. Why? Because the stock was going up, up, and away. Look at the five-year chart of this company. People were telling me, Paul, you don't get it about Tesla. You don't get it about Tesla. I still get that now, but not nearly as much. So is this the example of the start of the weighing machine? where the hype really drove it up and the story really mattered the most. And now the story is Elon Musk is distracted. He does psychedelics. He's buying Twitter. Well, guys, when this was going up and up and up, I kept saying to people, guys, don't assume everything's going to be rosy for this company. They're one of the hardest industries in the world. And you have a genius in Elon Musk, and there's no doubt he's a genius but he does get a little distracted. So if you didn't think that distraction was possible here, when his net worth was going to $200 billion, what do you think he's gonna do? I have $200 billion, what should I do with it? Let me go buy a company, let me go buy Twitter. These distractions do happen, and this is what I mean when I talk about the story and the hype versus the reality. I'm gonna go on a limb here. The all-time high in the stock was 414 on November 4th, 2021. My guess is 10 years from now, we will still not be above that number. And that's a crazy thing to say. People might laugh hearing that, but this happens many, many times when you see massive overvaluation. You might sit there and say, what do you think? Tesla's going to zero? No. And I also bet, I also bet this revenue number is going to be a lot higher. So you look at that and say, guys, this has happened many times in the past. Cisco, Intel, HPQ, My- Micron didn't grow as much as it did until later. I look at these things saying, guys, be very careful when the story and the hype and everybody is, is in favor of it. When I had a 17-year-old caddy on the golf course telling me I didn't understand Tesla, I sat there and thought, okay. And that was June of 2021. So before the peak, and he probably felt like a genius there. But June of 2021 was when? Right here. A high of 232, and it went to 414 in a matter of five months. And it's now lower than it was back then. Why? Because I didn't understand Tesla. I very well could not understand Tesla. But what I do understand is every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And if this company doesn't find a way to generate far more gross margin in other parts of the business, it'll be a car company that should sell for between 0.4 and one times revenue. And that means when they're doing 500 billion in revenue by selling cars, the market cap will be lower than it is today. That's what I mean. Guys, I love Teslas. I had one. Mo has one. Everybody I know has has one. But guys, you can love a company, but dislike the stock. Right now, I'm going to go through Stock Analyzer tool and see just how much I think Tesla might be overvalued by. So here's my 10-year analysis on Tesla. Let me go line by line. Revenue growth. I did 10, 16, and 20%. Just to let you know, it's 16% revenue growth in the next 10 years. It takes their revenue from $96 billion to over $400 billion. That's a big jump. To show you even crazier, what does 20% do? 20% takes you from $96 billion to almost $600 billion in revenue. Now, in our past videos, I always said, guys, how are they going to sell 10 or 15 million vehicles a year with such a high average price. And that's what you see now, declining average price. Why? Because they, if they get to the masses, you need to offer less expensive solutions. There's a reason why Ferrari only sells 13,000 cars a year. Their average price is $300,000. Tesla cannot sell 15 million cars a year at $100,000 a car. And that's what I kept stressing over and over again. So I'm looking at this saying, okay, these are big revenue growth numbers. All right. Profit margin. Now, I might have beaten this up more than people like. I did 5, 10, and 15%. I'm going to modify those a little bit. I think Tesla can make more than the 5% the average car company does. I'm going to do 8, 12, and 16. I'm going to do the same thing for the free cash flow margin. So I am giving a higher value than I did before on these profit margins and free cash flow margins because of the growing side of their business that is not attached to cars. Okay? P.E., The question is, what's the PE you're going to apply to this company in 10 years? It's going to be a lot bigger, but it's going to have a bigger moat most likely. But we're also seeing that a lot of car companies out there are getting more EV going. But hopefully, if Tesla can avoid the whole entire union idea, and I'm not trying to get into the union conversation, so don't blast me in the comments about that, but union costs do drive up the cost of cars. And I do worry about that with Tesla but I'm still giving it an aggressive 15, 20, and 25 multiple 10 years from now. I still think it's aggressive, 
especially for the car business, but that's okay. And finally, I put a 9% return across the board. This is your margin of safety. 9% return, that's about the market. So this number, the numbers that pop up here will not include any sort of margin of safety. I hit the analyze button. The stock is currently at 192. All right. I have a low price of 57, a high price of 355, and a middle price of 165. That's a big range. But again, no margin of safety. The reason it's such a big range is 10-year growth on those big differences in revenue growth can drive a lot at the bottom line. So guys, you've seen the software. Our community's here. If you want to engage with people and use our stock analyzer tool here on other companies, we have a free seven-day full access free trial at everythingmoney.com. Go sign up.